All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Scoots, and thank you for the fabulous analysis we've been having so far. But this is it. End of the first quarterfinal happening right now. Last map played out on Nuke between these two teams. Yes, indeed. Big shout out to Sh Top Gun for doing such a great job. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely loving it. And it's such, such, such a great uh, addition when we can bring in these pro players to help us out with it. On Nuke, though, Semler, I mean, do you agree? I think Fnatic are slightly favored in this, just yes. a little bit. Well, we were talking about it during the break. Mm. And really what it's going to come down to, and this, like what we should be seeing here on this map right now, between these two teams in particular, is uh, focused aggression and also on yard, basically. We, we can expect to see a lot of pressure, a lot of rushes. And also, a lot of this is going to come down to, at least according to Fetish, going to give the man props, at least according to Fetish, a lot of this is going to come down to yard control between both of these teams. But the only problem is, is that you need to know the smokes to be able to get yard control. So do these teams actually know the smokes? Do they know how to get everything rolling yeah, yeah. for themselves here? That's what we're about to find out here. We are not wasting any time getting into the pistol round here. Na'Vi at least get the easier start. But I think, Fnatic will be on T side. I think if Na'Vi win this map, it happens with, with them playing a whole bunch of rounds on the CT side without ever losing a single person. Because the problem for the CT side is once you lose somebody, you have to adjust your position. And if you don't do it correctly, it's really tough. Now the rush is on for the A bomb site. Seized waiting in hot. Seized set 75, gonna go down. Crims with a great opening. And Seuss actually taking a lot of damage on that fall. On the ladder, that's gonna hurt. And they don't actually go for the plant, they cancel it. They're so confident right now, Fnatic. They've got the man advantage. They've got a two-man advantage. And this is just falling apart now for Na'Vi. They're trying to get in and do some damage. But there you go. Zeus and Starks bring it back somehow to a two-on-one. And the bomb hasn't even been planted. Olafmeister has to clutch this. And he's going to get the one kill. Reloading. He goes down. Zeus picks up the triple kill. So confident. Maybe too confident in that position there. That was, and you can see Garden, everybody on Na'Vi getting so hyped. It was so close, but magnificent play from Zeus and Starks to bring it back to that situation. They turn it around, and Fnatic have to be kicking themselves for not getting the plant when they could. That could have changed everything. Ulfmeister has to face them, turn it into a 1v1 to have a chance at getting that bomb plant, and it just doesn't happen. Yeah, and even if they wanted to readjust and actually, you know, just plant on the other side, but they went looking for kills, and that's just too dangerous. This time, they're really quick down the vents. I like this movement from, uh, from Fnatic, and the bomb is going to go down here. So yeah. That's a really smart play. They get some kills in as well. It's a very, very cool round from, uh, from the Swedes. This is dangerous. They are not no, the going to dropped. get the bomb plant because they do manage to actually rotate a man down to cover that lower site. JW still running gun with that CZ. Picks up one star. He's going to get outflanked by Olaf. This could be a complete turnaround. Olaf Meister runs out of bullets, though, oh. and he gets hunted down by Edward. And visible frustration there from Olaf Meister. He knew that should have been a kill. That should have been 100% on Starix, which would have made it a two-on-one. JW has the bomb, but these rounds are close. Fnatic could have won this round as well as the pistol. Oh, and he's actually going up to this upper side. This is great from JW. Navi expecting him to go to the lower. Edward is still alive in vents. However, he could get the drop on JW. He spots him, doesn't make any noise. And there you go. Edward gets the kill. Fnatic, no plant. Navi managing to deny that. That whole round for Fnatic was all about getting a man through Squeak Door as quickly as possible down T-Vent and onto that lower bomb site to just get the plant money. That was what they all wanted was that plant money to be able to buy in this round. And imagine if they had put down the bomb, even just in the 2-1-2, two -two, how much pressure would have been on Navi to get in there. No bomb plant. Not only did it not give Fnatic the money to buy in this round, it also um, meant Navi had so much time to move around afterwards. Now it seems like Fnatic again, they're just going to go for a straight up YOLO play out onto A. Zeus is flashed in main and they're going forward again. They're just going to get that bomb straight down the vents. And he's actually coming back up through the vents. It looks like they want to go for a fake here. Fnatic getting fancy and they're getting punished. Zeus, got to be careful running out of bullets, pulling out the pistol. Really should take some time to reload. And they're doing a lot of tricks here with the vents. Jumping up one, moving up the other. It is a three on three. Navi struggling in rounds where even Fnatic just have pistols. That's a really bad sign for what's to come. Oh, shots already going out. Once they manage to line them up, Edward will finish it. The bomb has been dropped out. And this is the big thing here is that Zeus, he sees the bomb. He has to be worried about the play, the flank from Yard. Olfmeister managing to work around, look through main. Zeus sees it coming, though, decides to change up his position. Going to get behind CT Red into Garage, in fact. And this allows Olfmeister to walk in. But Olfmeister, he's never going to expect Zeus to be here. Easy kill for Zeus. Edward gets another kill. And this is going to be the third round lockdown for, for Na'Vi. They're really not holding that eight bomb site very well. I think Fnatic have a great chance of having a really good first half here. It feels like Na'Vi, I mean, we know there's not the skills that are lacking, but they might not be, be that used to the angles here. 
and they're not using very many grenades either. There's no smokes in the hut. There's no Molotovs down towards the squeaky door. They're really taking it slowly like that. This time they have bought two Molotovs, so that's actually a pretty good, uh, pretty good upgrade, I think. It is. I mean, this stops that rush. If the Mollies go down here, all of Mice are looking towards main. He's looking to pick off Zeus, who's been playing that position quite frequently here. It's Guardian out in yard. Not going to land the shot on the man on Silo. That's JW up there right now for Fnatic. Flipch comes out, and Guardian does not get it. But still, this is pressure on Fnatic now, because Guardian, that's a terrific alley to just be holding with that off. He is not a fun person to be running up against. You have to land a sick AK headshot if you want to clear him out of there quickly. Nice position from Edward out here. I'm, I'm really loving this. And Olaf Meister trying to scope up inside the hut there, see if he can catch anyone in CT main. And uh, some time spent here for Fnatic just walking around, feeling out Na'Vi. And Guardian actually taking up as, about as passive a position as you can get, all the way back in CT spawn, looking towards Yard. So they really, I mean, a lot of this is coming down to Yard focus right now. Na'Vi seeing, or Fnatic rather, seeing if they can find any picks anywhere. But Edward pushes up from Secret, finds JW with his knife out, and that's going to be the first frag going Na'Vi's way. Edward taking a bit of damage. Olaf Meister also down to 90. Oh, it's a great opening from Pronex, and a second kill is going to drop Guardian. Definitely nicely done. Edward rotating into position into the squeak. It's going to be really good. Are they going to realize that he's down? They've only got 20 seconds, actually. If they try and put the bomb down here and it fails, that's horrible. There's a Molotov covering it as well. 17 seconds, 16. The time is running out here. Flusher opens up. Edward's going to pick up the one kill here. Now it's a one on three. 10 seconds left. They're going to go for the plant here. And this grenade can't stop it. Close, very close round, but Fnatic pick it up. And now he can't make it happen, but that was in large part due to that double opening from Pronax. Yeah, I mean, Pronax opened it up wide at ramp. That was excellent from him. The two crucial kills to allow Fnatic to start putting pressure on there. I love the position from Edwards. Somebody's been watching Titan, at least, because that is a go-to play for Titan. Smith's getting down in Toxic like that. Zeus trying to get a bit fancy there at the end there with the nade. Not sure if I approve. I mean, he still had gun. He still had uh, bullets in his rifle. He should have been just spraying madly because with 10 seconds left, if he, if he drops that bomb carrier, trying to defuse, there's no time for Fnatic to actually get the plant. So, and in spite of Navi winning three rounds in a row because they lost so many play players in those rounds, they they have to eco straight away. So Fnatic are bouncing right back in the game. Yeah, I, the way Navi are playing right now, I think it's almost uh, impossible for for Fnatic not to to win this game. Navi really needs to change what they're doing. Well, going Going into this, we knew that Fnatic, they actually have put some work into this map, at least. I mean, LGB, we've seen them play it before as well. Now it's a question of, as to whether the uh, the new LGB members can mesh well with the Fnatic members, right? Uh, Crims and Olafmeister, can they can they blend in with the, with the other three on this new map that I don't think they've really put any time into at all. Whereas Na'Vi, I mean, it's it's just fact. Na'Vi don't play nuke. They, they really don't, so... Their T side, their T side, I think, is going to be a lot of what Fnatic have been doing, really, basically. Just rush out, try and get kills quickly, and try and go for picks. Rely on the aim to do the job. Yeah, that's very, very tough. Guardian goes down as well. If the CTs know what they're doing on, on their side, then... Just rushing like that, it's going to be really, really hard for Na'Vi. Oh, even gonna, for Na'Vi. It's going to be brutal. I mean, because good crossfire setups, I mean, even, even like average crossfire setups are very tough to deal with on... Uh, on A site, on B site, right? So, I mean, if, if Fnatic can get into decent positions, it can turn into a slaughter very quickly. It all comes down to the entry frags for Na'Vi. And I mean, they still have Zeus, they still have, I mean, they still have, uh, well, Zeus is obviously capable, as, we, as we've seen so far in this half, but seized Edward Guardian, like those are the guys we're going to be looking to for uh, Na'Vi when the half switches. But Fnatic will pick up a second round here, everybody holding on to their guns as well. Na'Vi, not exactly sure if they have the money to be able to go for a buy just yet. Edward has 4,500. But they will manage to have just barely enough. A couple FAMASs will have to make do. It's not exactly great, I think, on the CT side for Na'Vi. One of the strengths would have been uh, to have Guardian outside with the AWP really goes without saying. So the fact that they can't afford one, I don't really blame them for forcing it up here, but the fact that they can't afford, afford one could really be a, a big issue. And now we have JW who's actually going to be making his way up to Yard. He's going to get boosted up onto Silo. And now... This is when it turns into a bit of the shooting gallery. He's expecting a man to be playing patiently behind CT Red, but Guardian actually looking towards main, making sure that anybody can't drop down on top of main roof and look to split A. So, very passive hold here from Guardian. C is taking a lot of damage through the door there, which is a bit unfortunate for him. He actually just walked in front of it as well. So that seems strange. Grenade that drops him even lower down. Smoke's going to go off here. But uh, one more bit of uh, damage through there, and he's probably going to go down. JW looking for more openings if he drops down, though. Guardian is there to spot him. I don't think Guardian's been... Guardian spots him. 
Should be an easy kill here. JW in a hot lot beat, of trouble. It's like we're watching a spaghetti western. Guardian making JW dance. Man, that should have been a pickoff. That's, I mean, seven HP is enough for JW to still do a lot here. So well, maybe uh, a little bit unfortunate. That, that is, I mean, seven HP on JW. You drop that up on top of main. All of Meister can't get up to it. Crims either, so it gets rough for Fnatic. But now Starx is going to be able to get into a position on long, or rather in window, on the lower site. Has to break that window, though. Not sure if Fnatic were close enough to hear that, though. And they have Edward waiting down in Toxic but as they're well. They're going back. This is pretty going to be an A push here. Crims does get the kill, but all of Meister and Pronex open up. And there's going to be some good returns coming in here now. Just 10 seconds left. Flusher goes up and he does take down the kill. He's still in a one on two. 11 seconds jumps down. One point of health and just six seconds. He's going to go for the plan and he might just be allowed to get it as well. That's a big victory for Fnatic, even losing the round. It's not too bad for Flusher just committing to it. That was actually a fantastic hold, all things considered here for Na'Vi, managing to, to again, get that crossfire set up. And that's what it's all about, really, on, on this upper side, is if you, have, if you have two guys, unless Fnatic know exactly where to be looking to find them quickly enough to get those kills, it, it, well, Fnatic can just get mowed down despite getting the entry on Seized. So this kind of resets things for Fnatic. Thanks to the, to the previous two rounds, though, they have actually got quite a bit of bank going into this round. And we've seen a, a lot of it getting spent here, that AWP for JW, for example. But still, Na'Vi able to put together a buy as well. I mean, it's so close for both of these teams, really, as far as the money is concerned. That's the real problem here. Na'Vi need to get a bit of breathing room if they want to actually get enough rounds on this CT half to, to have a fighting chance going into their second. Yes, indeed. Outside, we do have Guardian with the AWP, but they also have one on JW. He's going to take the peak a little bit too late there. He misses the shot, which should have been an easy one for someone like Guardian. And he does take down JW, so it's actually almost even better. And Edward going to drop Pronax. So two for one trade really early on. And Olaf Meister with a great return. Not bad, not bad. Looking to the likely spot there. Seized getting punished. The bomb has been dropped. They're kind of caught in a box here below vents. Zeus is going to be the one holding here. He's trying to push them back. He does a lot of damage to Flusher. Drops him down to 10 HP. Stark's trying to move in to get the kill, but they're not going to manage to get it fast enough there, Na'Vi. And Fnatic are rotating once again, but they still have a minute left on the clock. They just need to keep their cool here, Fnatic. Not give away a frag, not rush things. Take their time and set it up. Olafmeister just not managing to spot Zeus quite yet, but they're out on this A site. And there you go. Zeus turns in time, realizes what's happening. Yeah, good information. Northwest has got to be careful. There's a guy on high as well. Guardian does go down here. Two on three. Still got 35 seconds to make a play. Flush is going to join up Sign and can they make this happen? The bomb goes down, but they actually have decent positions here. Seuss and Starix. And we'll see if they can make it work. One is spotted behind. I think they know this one in Vents too. They heard that drop. A lot of people they have to look for. Crims with a great headshot and now Seuss should run away. And Zeus deciding that it's going to be too much to handle here. If he can pick up this AWP, that's actually going to be a pretty big win here. Give that to Guardian in the next round. He's just going to be looking to save his rifle. So Despite the fact that he knew where Olfmeister was, he did hear him go down into vents. Yeah, he couldn't really do anything about it. Zeus looking up here, and he's going to go down to Krim. So nice pick up as well, and Fnatic win a third round. Definitely well played by them. I think one of the things we're seeing from Na'Vi here is actually that they're just not used to playing the angles. You can see down when Zeus was down in towards Secret, uh, towards the you know the underground. He he knew that they were there, but you can tell from the way he peeked and when he was sort of getting ready to shoot that he's not used to playing those positions. He's no Freiburg. No, and it's just it's hard to just adapt for. It seems easy, but. At this level, even even small things really make a big difference. Uh, that, at this level, we're talking about split-second differences here between landing the shot and not getting it. And when, when you're not used to the angles that you're holding, that is going to cost you that split second that's going to allow the other team to land the shot first. And at this level, these guys are so good at hitting headshots, especially with AKs, they will find you and they will take advantage of it. So Na'Vi, they have to try and stay a step ahead on Fnatic, uh, ahead on Fnatic but when they don't have the experience on the map, that's when... Well, life gets very hard for them. Yeah, attempted rush into lobby. Not a bad idea, but um, Fnatic were ready for it. You can catch a terrorist team off guard like that and get a couple of kickoffs and maybe spin something from there. It's going to be 4-4. Four, four. The game has been equalized here, and now we are going to go for the bias. They probably should. They probably, well, they realize that they have to get a little bit of control back here. They're giving away far too many rounds to Fnatic. Four rounds for Fnatic, who have a bit more experience on the map, means that when they switch over to this CT side, I mean, four rounds is still cutting it a bit close, but if Fnatic started to get up to that six, seven round area, that's going to be really tough for Na'Vi to come back in this half or in the second half. So all the pressure on Na'Vi now with this buy. 
JW looking through to main. May just put a shot through. Not going to do it. Starks does find Pronax, though, and that's at ramp, but it's a quick one for one as Flusha pushes through, and now it comes down to the man holding it across, and that's not going to work for Seized. He gets overrun. That ramp position really seems uh, very weak at the moment. Edward might be able to make something of this, though. Guardian looking towards the window here. Got to pick up the first kill, so that starts bringing back to a three-on-three, -three, and Flush is kind of low. There's a chance still. Edward will get a kill. The bomb being planted inside, and oh, it looked like that should have been the angle, but it wasn't. Not quite. Just shooting over there, not quite connecting, and that's a big opportunity missed now. But Navi do have the man advantage closing in on this. Allweister's taking tremendous damage already, down to 12 HP. He's going to get overwhelmed, and JW is now the man holding. Misses a very crucial flick shot. That is not supposed to happen, JW, but then again, you make it up with the no scope. You get the second one, and he goes for the third, but he doesn't get it. He has to turn to the pistol, but JW comes through, and Fnatic. 1v3, clutch the round, Na'Vi have to be reeling! And I mean, I love more evidence to suggest that Na'Vi really are not used to playing on this map. It's when JW probably should have had the first shot as well, it looked like a, a huge miss from him. But once he missed it, they had so much time to get up and, and take care of him like that. And now now Na'Vi, I think it's starting to dawn on them. We, we Even if we put in some practice secretly here, it might not have been quite enough. No, this is a problem. They're, they're gonna quickly lose control here. Fnatic, they can start spinning. JW just gave his team that. I mean, that's also the boost of confidence for the team, right? Your, your, your player clutches around like that. That makes a huge difference for the entire atmosphere, the communication on the team. Everybody's gonna get just a little bit more confident when they take the peaks, and, this, and that is not gonna be good for Na'Vi, who are definitely gonna be not very pleased with how that round went. That's when the confidence starts to suffer on their side. So we have to see if they're gonna be able to stabilize here at some point. But it's another round of pistols for Na'Vi, four CZs and a P250 on Guardian. They know enough to go for the cheek boost up to heaven. So, I mean, the thing is that the play, there's a big difference between watching other teams play a map and practicing that map yourself. So, Fnatic, they have the room to be able to do some of the cool things that they've seen other teams go for. Uh, Guardian is actually ready for it down here. So he's sort of anticipating someone might be showing up. He spots the gun and Zeus will take a kill, but sees falls. Still, anything works here for Na'Vi. Any kind of kills they can get in, pick up a rifle or something. It's all down to that right now. They gotta, they gotta make some something magical here if they want to get back into this game right now. Starix will pick up another one. Edward is outside, and it's a one on three. So there will be six four here for Fnatic, and that is already plenty of rounds to work with for the Swedes. Well, we're seeing that there's very good communication on Fnatic as well there, because as soon as they realize that Edward is backed off, JW instantly changes up his plant position because he was planning for main, and instead, once he knows, okay, Edward can actually come through main to stop that plant. No, no hesitation, stops the plant, changes it up so that he's going to be hidden. So that's, um, I mean, it's the little details here, but Fnatic are definitely looking very confident after that big win from JW. Na'Vi, with, where exactly are they sitting as far as money is concerned? I mean, they've had to go for one round of eco, and it seems like they should be going for another buy here after this one. They all should have enough money to make it happen. Yeah, they will. So Guardian has the option. Let's see if we can actually hear if there's any communication going on on Na'Vi's side, just to see what they're saying. Good up. Варіант, ти можеш бити Трампа, в принципі, там все рівні живе один на рацію і відчисляють. Денізка, Денізка, біги по сотку, типа прямо, поняв, по дев'ятки, і вбивай типа в будки, які можуть вийти нас застрілити. Варіант, 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 окей. Я ухав. So, we definitely recognize the word ramp, and, and they're right. Ramp is definitely one of the places that has uh, been really weak so far, but you saw them high-five, they sounded like they're still talking, they don't sound like they're completely dispirited, and that is at least a good sign. Yeah, absolutely. Good communication. Zeus are actually rallying the troops there as well. Starks and Guardian communicating. That's crucial right now, but Seized getting picked off on Cat is not going to help things for Na'Vi right now. Already down a man, Edward's taking fire as well, and Fnatic have now got the man advantage with the gear to boot. They should be able to move in here at ramp and actually apply pressure to the part that's, I mean, to the to the weak spot on the map. And you have to ask the question, how on earth JW managed to get into CT main without anyone spotting him? That is like a one in a million occurrence on Nuke. Nobody at all was holding Yard, none from Na'Vi. So that was a very, very clean entry there. Edward falls down, does pick up JW, unfortunately for him. And Edward's going to try and make his escape here before he goes down. He's very low on health. He actually does make it out of there, and Plush is looking at it. He's going to come back down again. Star Eggs, there we go, gets a kill on Pronax. Not enough to stop the plant happening, though. They do manage to plant for main. Edward managing to get the flank, though. Drops Olafmeister scarily low, but he loses his teammate in the process. 
And Edward backing off slowly here. Realizes there's not really much he can do. If they had had the, the backup from high, it would have been different. But this one on two, I mean, with this little health, it's, it seems on, it, almost impossible. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be a question of whether they actually manage to figure out that this is going on. It looks like we do have the pause coming in. And I'm wondering if he's going to die here anyway. No, he shouldn't die here. Are you sure about that? No, oh. yeah, he's pla it's planted for main. That's so, cutting it pretty close, though. Yeah. That should be a safe spot. Like you should, not, you should never die from that position. Uh, although eight HP, I mean, maybe if it's planted uh, like on the far side towards Cat, he probably he could probably die there. It'd probably do enough. But um, planted for main. Looks like Devil Walk is going to be handing another Red Bull over. Karn does not approve. And yeah, this is this is what we expect to see really. Because one thing that's been a, a, an adjustment to the rules here, and this is for the major. This is the, well, I think the first time that we've seen this right now, at least in quite some time. Not the first time in the CS history, of course, because 10 years is a long time. But yeah, in CS:GO right now, you can actually take one uh, time out per map. So this is according to every team here. You are allowed to have a three-minute timeout once per map. So Navi, you know, things are not going well for them here on this CT side. They know how crucial this half is for them. They have to get more rounds than four. I'm, I'm approving of this break. Like, take yeah. a breather, take a step back from the game, well, I mean, stand up and talk a little bit, see what, see what you can come up with. The rest of this half and, and the second half is the difference right now for Navi between going to the semis or getting knocked out of the tournament. So if you want to take a timeout, now is pretty much the time to do it. Um, and they are, does, I mean, they must be talking about how to actually set up a proper defense. They, you know, we, we were listening in and we could hear that they had some concerns about the ramp room. So it's good that they, they put some effort on it, but then they gave up the entirety of the, of the outside area. No one covering. And that meant JW could just walk in casually and take a kill inside the A-bomb site. And, um, and that's the problem when you're trying to fix issues on the fly for Navi, that, you know, you, you give up something else. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that you're you're learning. It's a learning process right now for Navi, and I'm sure that they're just going over it like, okay, now let's uh, let's let's buckle down, basically. Everybody play their spot, um, and just try and land the shots because this is down to Edward, basically having that M4, having saved it from the last round. Uh, going to check real quick and see if they have the money to go for another buy, and they could force it up here actually. And we're going for the M4 and, Ke and Kevlar. The rest of the team should be able to go for a Famas M4s. They will be able to have enough here to be able to put up at least a bit of a fight. But Fnatic still have. Full rifles, an AWP on JW, and full nades. So they really do have the advantage going into this round. You need those nades on CT side to be able to stop uh, rushes coming in from the T side. Although I'm not sure exactly. Right now we're getting more towards the, the end of the half. And one, you know, you see aggression at the beginning of the half, right? Where it's still, you still have some rounds to lose. You can, you can still kind of give a little bit away. But towards the end of the half, I expect to see Fnatic play a bit more calm, a bit more patient, and not wanting to throw away the advantage that they have. I mean, they already have a tremendous advantage going into the remaining rounds. But still, I'd be surprised if Pronax was just like, okay, let's, let's go crazy, guys. Let's go ham. Oh, aggressive setup from Navi pushing up here. JW misses the first kill, but there's a lot of people stacked up right here. They're so low on health, one grenade would be enough, and actually it's going to be a team kill from JW. Zeus will pick up a kill, and we're back into a three-on-three -three after a series of strange events going into that uh, radio room. Guardian potentially in a great position. He spots one and sees. They should be communicating here. They must know he's there. Guardian goes down. A big mistake here from Navi. If we're going to get the return kill at least, but the bomb is planted, and it is a two-on-two. Two on two, Zeus and Seize moving on through. JW's waiting in the vent. Zeus actually getting caught on the ladder there, and they know exactly where Seized is on the edge of that smoke. A Navi at the end cannot hold off the Fnatic push. Fnatic just getting straight down onto that site, catching Navi off guard. Despite the fact that Navi actually had, what, three guys waiting at radio, they couldn't get the spray down. Yeah, and I was going to say, you, know, you said catching him off guard, but Na Guardian saw him jumping in the window. Oh, he's, he communicated that. You saw Seize pre-firing it. Yeah, but, so, that was, definitely. but that was not a smart thing to do because it's a big risk. With an M4A1, you, run, you have 20 bullets. Oh, sure, sure. So he doesn't get the kill, runs out of bullets, and, you know... That Again, it's that second behind, perhaps, right? That second, yeah. one second that makes a difference. It probably is. Navi really struggling here. They're going to force it up once more, see if they can connect with the last couple of rounds here. We're in the 13th first half here of this final map between these two absolutely great teams. And right now, it's working out brilliantly for Fnatic. 8-4. 8-4, uh, just an excellent lead right now for the Swedes. And this is the map to decide who moves on to the semifinals and who will be going home. Quarterfinal match here on the line. And Fnatic, a, a, a major championship holder already from DreamHack Winter last year, the first major in CSGO. These guys are looking to get back into the finals and get it done. 
They are. Take down Edward with a quick trade here. Guardian can't really help out. Now he's got to be careful. He's going to go down as well. Guard Navi being picked up one at a time, not setting up any positions where they could get a return frag. Seuss goes down, and then after that, is there going to be Star Wars chuking in? So this is one long round of Navi dying one by one by one. Now Starx is going to get overwhelmed in the end. The bomb plant will happen even. So it's an extra, you know, 300 bucks for the guy who got the plant. Nicely done there. Fnatic getting greedy. But 14 rounds and Na'Vi just continue to force by. They, they really have no option. They, they can't save at this point. They need the remaining rounds. Guardian, realizing that they didn't have a single nade on the team, just decides to go Kevlar-less. You know, he's like armorless. He's Rambo right now. He's just going to run in, chuck nades, and people are going to die. There's really not much we can say right now for, for Na'Vi. I mean, it's, it's, it's really uh, it's, it's a shame because, it, you know, you really don't want the last map to be like this, but we've seen it once before from them. This is a good start, though. Sees with a double kill, and uh, it's going to be Edward picking up JW, so it's nice to see them finally landing some shots, and that's out in the courtyard, all of it. That's uh, yeah, exactly, and now J Olafmeister is the one picking up this AWP. He's going to get boosted up on the box. Let's see if he turns right at the, at the right time. Does not. Guardian gets the timing on him. And this is just going to be Crims getting caught in a box. Crims does manage to turn around and pick off Zeus. But he is still stuck out here. One minute left, and he decides to try and make a run for it with that AWP. I mean, if he can get in there, I mean, that is a choke point. He could just turn that into a shooting gallery, but still. I think well, Fnatic, regardless of what happens, I mean, they have nine rounds on the T side right now. That's, oh. that's just huge. That is... It's an overwhelming amount. I'd be, I'd be more than just a little bit stunned if Fnatic somehow can't win this on the second half. Yeah. Win or lose the pistol round shouldn't even have such a big implication, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. 15th round is coming up, the last of the first half here. Na'Vi do, of course, have money to buy, but so do Fnatic. Plenty of that indeed. And they are going to be going it slowly again. Now, this time, patience, right? Looking for the picks with JW out in yard. Guardian has it as AWP as well. He's looking all the way up to Pronax. Is Pronax going to peek around this corner? Is the flash going to come through? JW taking fire. And this is turning into a real shootout in yard once again. A lot of focus being put here by both teams. They're looking to land the shots, but Guardian is still alive here. Flash goes in. He's going to be forced back. He could have died then. That's a very, very dangerous maneuver here for the Orper. He's going to take down Olaf Meister. That's not at all bad. Now it's a four and three, and he's going to re -peak. He didn't spot the feet then. I'm surprised he didn't. Flash out, goes for it, and misses the shot. JW. They should work more together here, Fnatic. They're not good. There's no reason why they're challenging Guardian one at a time, really. Yeah, it's also a good movement from Guardian trying to set that up. But JW not getting the shot on Guardian. Guardian is still alive out here in yard. This is great footwork from him. JW takes the shot. Not going to get it. Guardian perseveres and in the meantime flush is just cleaning up the entirety of the b bomb side single-handedly walking in and taking a great couple of kills there so leaving Seuss and guardian in a two on four from a four on four so that's all flusher just uh, being able to walk in and that's that's what we look to flush i mean that's what fanatic looked to flusher for he needs to be delivering performances like that i mean 15th round if this ends 10-5 well, Fnatic, they only need six rounds going into the second half to secure the win and secure that spot in the semis right now. But Zeus is currently working in on Long Guardian, manages to catch Crims off guard. Nice shot there, but Pronax from Toxix returns instantly, takes out Zeus, and Guardian will get flanked by Flusha. Flusha gets three frags at the end of that round, and Fnatic are now sitting on ten rounds going into the second half here. And a lot of this is I mean, just coming down to Na'Vi not really having the experience. The, the knowing, like, a good CT on Nuke all comes down to communication, but also rotations. Knowing exactly where your teammates are going to be going in any given situation. And that just comes from hundreds of hours of practice on a given map. Knowing exactly how to play it out, who's going to go where, who's going to be looking where, more importantly as well, so that you can most effectively get into position to deal with any kind of push coming out from the T side. And Na'Vi just clearly don't have that experience right now on the map, and that is seriously costing them. I think ultimately um, the, the failure that's happening on Na'Vi's side it happens on, on, a, on a number of different layers. So you're right, it is the, it is the lack of rotation or the incorrect rotation timings. It's also just the, the wrong angles, basically, and it's giving up part of the maps where, where part of the control to part of Fnatic that they can't allow to do. And all those things combined just means that even Na'Vi, even though they're really good and they have been hitting some, some interesting shots here, it is nowhere near enough to, to make up for, for, for what's going on. No, exactly. Now we, but now we get to see exactly if, if Na'Vi can pull a bit of a Fnatic. The all-out aggression at the beginning, get the momentum going, get a few rounds on the board before a Fnatic can get their feet under them and get that economy going. So I think that's going to be crucial here for Na'Vi. Obviously, the pistol round is always important, but for Na'Vi, it's pretty much life or death. They need those three rounds. 
part of the problem here really is that because you get, you know, a single veto, and now we potentially have three maps out of the seven that they're not that good at, which could be Overpass, Cobblestone, and Nuke. Three maps that we, I mean, even if they have tried, it's it's not might not be enough. Three out of seven means you are probably going to be playing, uh, you know, one or if you're really unfortunate, almost even two of the maps and, that you're not good at. This is this is a case of basically the wrong map being picked. You have one chance in three to land on the map you don't want to play because both of these teams wanted to play on the new maps. Both of these teams were like, yeah, we, we want to get on, get in on it on Overpass, on Cobble. And then, of course, they land on the worst case scenario for both teams, actually, because even even Fnatic don't, you know, they don't really have the experience on Nuke. So we'll see if they're able to lock down the CT side effectively here versus Na'Vi's push as Na'Vi will be gearing up for it. Seized with nades, 700 bucks spent on him, and the rest have Kevlar. It does make you wonder if Na'Vi's going to put some effort into actually learning you one day. You know, they if they're will. just one at day. The, at say, this point, mm -hmm. they, they have to. You can't allow this sort of situation to come through. You, you, even need, you just at least need basic strats. And I mean, they have been trying to go for the basic strats. Now we're going to see if they have any here prepared for the T side. But you really do need at least oh. a little bit of, of experience. I think what they're going to do is they're going to flash in through the windows here, and then they're going to all jump down CT main and then run into mm. the A-bomb side. So this is kind of like a lemming strand, just all flooding in. And I, I kind of, I'm enjoying this. The smoke is going to probably land up towards he heaven, and it's a really, really nice smoke as well. Going to maybe block off some of the fanatic. Now let's see here. He's going to be the first guy spotting me. He sees all of them coming in, and he's going to pick up an easy kill. And that actually stops the push. And that's the biggest problem here. Flusher just halting it to a ground, uh, grinding it to a halt here. Edward, Gus going to kill Seuss with one as well. And somehow it's still a 2 on 4. And now they're coming for Flusher. Uh, somehow the defense crumbles on the rest of the site. They need to get that bomb down. And it is. It has been planted. Navi doing their jobs. But we're back into a 2 on 2. Now Pronax still alive on high. Flusher closing in. And he's going to get this kill on Zeus. Just one more bullet would do it. Somehow the two Navi members are still still alive and we're into a clutch situation for Flusher. Yeah, and they just gotta leave him alone here. He doesn't have a kid. He's gonna go hunting and Edward will take him down. Triple kill and a double for Zeus as well. And I'm not sure why Fnatic lost that round at all. That, uh, because, okay, going into this, right, the Lemming strat straight up from main into, into A site. The man to stop that is Flusher. But then he's going to be able to give the early warning to his teammates, who should be able to get into position to stop anybody else coming in through the site. Yeah. But that just didn't happen. The rest of the defense crumbled, and we, we got stuck with Flusher alone in these duels. The power of that push in through main like that would be that the people in A die quick, and the rest don't have enough time to rotate. But once it stops and they're all battling it out with Flusher, they use infinite amount of time for Fnatic to do something. But um, sometimes I guess it doesn't quite work out that way. No. We'll see if Fnatic can pick up a, an eco round here. They have the scout as well, and Crims is on the corner, going to be taking down Guardian. They do have CZ 75s and armor, and Fnatic have already made absolutely exceptional use of these pistols in the, in these games. Uh, Edward, nice pick off there. Takes that, that scout out of play, but there are still four bought up members here for Fnatic, armor and CZs with the 5.7 on Pronex. He really does seem to favor that pistol, despite the fact that it costs an extra $200 you get 20 bullets instead of 12. So, I mean, and what, 96% armor pen on that? So, I mean, it's pretty silly with the 5 set. If you can get up close, you do a lot of hurt. But now, it, I mean, it comes down to whether Fnatic can actually land those shots, give themselves the opportunity here to catch Navi off guard because they have dealt considerable damage. Yeah, JW could have definitely picked up one, and they actually have two people here in the hut. They're going to be pushing again. Star H will deal with it, but that's... Uh, I love the fact... I like the idea of having two people here, just being able to surprise, and Olaf Meister will do just that. Picks up Star X. Going to go for a second one, and it's <laughs> nearly a triple spray down. It's back into a two-on-two -two here. This man is, is key. Seize is key. He's not going to stop Pronax from getting the frag, but still, he turns this into a 1v1. Seize down to 29 HP. Krim's rotating in. He has a Galil now as well, and Seize is going straight to him. But he goes down, and this is a great play here from Seize. With 10 seconds left, he should be able to get the plant in time. No, Krim's hurt it. He should be right on his heels. Krim's a little bit slow here, I feel like. That should, I think Krim's could have easily had that. He must have known that Seize couldn't fake it. A little bit of hesitation, but I mean, Crims has to know that Seize has taken some damage as well. He's got a gun now, he's at full HP. It's just confidence in his ability to clean up this last round. The fake defuses are going to be coming through here any minute now as Crims gets well, on that bomb. There's no kit, so this is going to, he's going to have to go for it really, really soon. The longer this goes on, Seize is just waiting here. Crims walks in, he gets the kill quick, but he can't win the round. He that has not managed to pull it off, and that is Navi securing their second round here in this half. Despite Fnatic's best efforts, Crims will live with an AK and armor, but that is not good enough. The Fnatic needed that round, actually, to just break Navi right here and now and guarantee that spot in the semis.
Definitely help, but it, again, you know, the, the worrying sign for Na'Vi is that, you know, they're rifles against pistols, just like on the first half, and they still end up losing so many players. Yeah. Which means Fnatic, once we get to the fourth round and they can actually buy, you it's have scary. to worry. It's going to be scary. There's no doubt about it for Na'Vi right now. I mean, just really effective pushes all around the map from Fnatic, just putting pressure on Na'Vi, dealing the damage, and turning it into a 1v1. You still have to admire Seas for not peeking at the end. I mean, not buying the fake. He knew that Crims was going to fake. He didn't even check, didn't make any noise. Just said, no, you're, you're totally faking. You're trying to bait me out into the open right now so you can stop me. Even if this goes to 15-10 in favor of Na'Vi, I'm still not going to believe in it until it's actually happening, this comeback. But um, we'll have to see. 10-7 here. Crims uh, showing himself and instantly falling back. I like that move as well. He's the one with the AK, so be smart if he can stay alive. They wanna keep, he wants to keep uh, Na'Vi guessing right now as to where he is on that map with that rifle because that's the one thing in the back of... Uh, Navi's mind, well, they still have to worry about the pistols and the positioning of the rest of the team, but that AK has the ability to wreck them completely if they rush around a corner unsuspecting. So Crim's holding long now, expecting Navi to be pushing down from secret, because once again, Navi have put all of their focus on Yard, really trying to play off the advantage that these rifles give them with the range. Well, they will go for a little bit of a boost outside, so they definitely know uh, a little bit of something about what's going on. Pronax walking in, and a great shot on Guardian. It's uh, that pistol range again. Uh, extremely, extremely solid work right now. And Seize is going to sneak his way up here. He finds JW on that A site, so brings it back to a 4 on 4. Pronax actually putting some fire through. That's not going to help things. Crims roll walks in, and he gets one kill with that AK. Navi managed to stabilize, turn this into a 1v2 until Flusha shows up and starts putting some damage down onto Zeus. That's going to keep Navi on their toes. He's going to get the plant from Aid, and Flusha coming very close to getting that kill on Seize. That would have been crucial. Scary position from Seize, not a lot of movement there, but Seize does pick up a triple. Seuss with the double, and we're at 10-8, uh, as now the Swedes can actually pick up rifles. And I think now is where now we are going to be put to the test. Either they, they somehow, by an absolute miracle, I mean, we're talking divine intervention type thing here, if they are actually going to be able to win this, I think. I agree that this is going to be a... Well, Fnatic have limited nades, only two HEs picked up, but they still have the flashes, they still have the smoke, so they should be able to stop any kind of rush coming in from Na'Vi. But I'm not surprised to see Na'Vi once again going for Yard. And this is going to be the focus here. Pushing out onto the Yard, trying to get some advantage here. Seize managing to get behind main, but there's still Edward alive on Silo. I really love Flush's position, though. Even if Na'Vi get control of Yard, he's still stopping the main entrance way into A site, and he's looking towards Squeak as well. So Flush are giving a lot of, in of information here to his team. Yeah, Crims with a good opening kill, and he can also hear them coming down. So Crims is going to be peeking up again. Flush with a kill. Crims picks up a second, and the Navi uh, assault outside is just completely crumbling. And this is how a CT side is supposed to work: the setup for the for the for the you know, return frags mm -hmm. and the good crossfires. Uh, it's just getting the information and taking advantage of it. Also, Crims having great timing, and you can tell that Navi aren't putting the focus that they need on secret to be able to stop that kind of push from coming through because they're still hunting for anybody at all to show themselves in Yard, and Crims just has that timing to peek up, get one kill, and fade away again. This time around, he gets two, and that's really the difference maker here. Olaf Meister spraying wildly, but it will be Pronax to pick up the final frag on Zeus, and now Fnatic secure their first gun round here. Their first buy. 20 rounds on the board, Fnatic with 11, and they only need five more to get into that uh, semis. Zeus and his lads, they actually have to eco here. They just don't have money enough for a real buy. I would say, eight. I mean, they could actually go with rifles fairly early because I would say like, hey, nades are going to be really important for them. But then you, you need to know how to use the nades on this map. Yeah. You, know, you need to know how to cut off yard with smokes, know where to place the flashes to bank them in properly for the pop. And Navi, I don't think, have that experience. No, I very seriously doubt that. Um... You said you, you thought the, the, the outside area was a good idea for, for Navi, and I actually agree. I think if, if, if Fnatic are somehow going to be too aggressive, or if they can set up aim duels with, with Fnatic and come out on top, mm -hmm. that might be the best shot, because if they go inside here, imagine the angles they're going to have to realize and, and try and cover, and it's not it's just not easy. Crims with a great double pickoff, and JW with a max 7, a bit of a, you know, yeah, standard play or a classic play from Fnatic on the, or from JW on this map. Now, I'm not sure. Was Edward, did Edward think he was, he got out of hut and he was still in the smoke? Because he kept putting, like, bringing the bomb out. I don't know if, I think maybe he got caught on edge there. He couldn't get out the door and he thought he may be able to get a smoke. I have no idea. Or, or a plant, but 
Edward just bringing the bomb out, maybe a bit of a tick for him, really, just trying to keep himself focused, because that is something that these players will do. When you see them swap from a rifle to a pistol or a rifle to their knife really quickly and going straight back to the rifle again, that's something. That's a tick that they do, basically, to keep their mind focused. Because when you're holding an angle for 30 seconds and you know you can't move, if your mind wanders, and we're talking about split seconds here, if your mind wanders just for that moment, what if the enemy peeks around that corner and manages to pop you in the face? So these players do quite a few things with their fingers, with their hands, to keep their minds active and focused on the task at hand. That's on the one thing, and I think for, for, for some of us who, who played 1.6 for a long time, it's also just because there was actually uh, an animation cancelling you could do with... You could do that as well. AWP and Deagle, for instance, just getting a, a little bit faster shot in now is like the classic thing. So I think that's also been inherited for a long time. So it's a little bit of everything into that mix here. 12 to 8, and we're into the 21st round as Na'Vi try and avoid elimination here from the ESL 1 Major Championship. Yeah. Fnatic now four rounds away, and the buy round coming in here for Na'Vi. JW, this is classic JW as well. The first time we saw Fnatic play Nuke, this is what JW did all game long. Swag 7 in the corner, getting massive <laughs> frags, and he just somehow finds them. And he turned into the Bank of Sweden, basically. Fnatic never ran out of money their entire CT half because JW just getting kept getting kills. Yeah, good fun, right? Good fun. Flusher up on the railing down here. Gonna see if he can pick up a kill. Edward actually and Seize will come up with some good ones. And Olaf Meister with a good return. So three on three. Olaf Meister making a lot of noise. And that actually probably got him killed. So a little yeah. bit careless, I think. Uh, but Crims is still outside. He's gonna go down. And this is a good opening for Na'Vi. But it isn't over yet. Pronax is still alive. He's gonna be sneaking up the vents. Takes down Seized. And... Now we're in a one-on-one. -on -one. And where does Edward go? He's got 40 seconds left, and it looks like he's just going to go straight down secret here. Does Pronax realize exactly what's happening, though? He's getting in the position where he's going to be able to rotate down to ramp fairly quickly through radio, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Seems like he's got an idea of what Edward is up to here. He's looking to see if Edward tried to work his way through yard through hell, but Edward is already down on that lower side behind that smoke getting that plant. A decent position from Edward, but oh, Pronax. He doesn't know. So he guesses it wrong, also flashes himself, which doesn't really help out. Takes, takes fall damage. damage. Pronax, what's going on, man? That's enough. No more mistakes here, Pronax. Just straight well, down in. And he actually has a grenade, which means he can explode one of these doors and maybe force Edward into a really strange position. Edward crouching here. Pronax charging in. Edward waiting, and he gets the kill. Are you kidding me? Edward with the triple. And a really interesting round from Na'Vi. And Pronax, I think, actually... If he I didn't take the fall damage, he won that duel. And I think maybe also, I think the series of mistakes there probably put even more pressure on himself, if nothing else, just mentally, because it looked like he was, you know... Starting to flip out. Yeah, well, I mean, he's checking out. angles that Edward would have to be mad to hold, like Edward going all the way back up to secret after that plant. Well, Edward, he just had this perfect little spot to hide in. Pronax not able to get there in time. And Pronax, I mean, it, you know, you have to have any kind of idea of where your opponent went, right? Because the bomb sites are one on top of the other. So when you hear the plant, sometimes on Nuke, it's tough to tell exactly if it's been planted upper or lower. So Pronax, you know, thinking it was upper, wasted time, took unnecessary fall damage, and ended up paying for it. Flashing himself in the meantime, too, yeah. just for good measure. I don't think the flashbang actually made much, much of a difference, but, you know, again, mentally, if you you feel like, oh, I'm not really on form, I'm out of my zone just a little bit, maybe you're just going to be stumbling too much about. Well, Na'Vi now actually with the second, uh, basically with a breath of fresh air here. Crims again in his position in secret. He's looking to find if Seize is going to walk. He, he, he actually, does he just decide to spray through or did yeah. he spot Seize through the smoke there? I think, I think he knew that smoke was going to disappear in about two seconds, so he decides, okay, I'm going to shoot and then run back. Free fire. It's been really good for Crimson. He's been great in that position, so um, I'm not surprised he keeps doing it. Because Navi don't deal with it very well. Well, one of the, the one of the Swedish hopes here on the brink of taking this. If they take this round right here, they break Navi's back. Yeah, that would very likely be uh, Fnatic in the semifinals if they can pick this up. Crimson in the back here does get a really good pickup. Goes in for a second one, and it works out so well. They're trying to grenade him down. Starix will get a return, but I'm not sure it's going to be enough here. Starix, good double kill here to bring it home, and Olaf Meister goes down as well. Fnatic shaking a little bit here. Still no bomb plant. Ten seconds left. They're going to smoke, and they're going to go for it. And JW knows exactly what's going to happen here. Ten seconds left. Flush up behind it, Vents. JW. Not making noise on the ladder. He actually gets down here. They have no idea they're right behind, but he could get sandwiched. Did Seized realize? JW's worried about someone coming and finding him here. That is already really far tick. Flusher coming in. JW goes down and one on two now. Navi picking up uh, two consecutive rounds here. Flusher can't win this any longer. He's just got, not got time for it. He does have a kit, but that doesn't matter. I'm not even sure why he's actually fighting right now instead of just falling back. And I think he realizes at the very end here. Seized, gonna explode with the bomb. 
Edward as well. Oh, well, Flusha makes sure of it with Edward. Seized, manages to live through, but... Yeah, he runs away. That's good. That was uh, JW not just quite... Just, I mean, just missing the timing, basically. He catch Seized. Seized turns around, gets the job done when JW comes back down. Not really sure what JW was waiting for there, you know, hanging on the, hanging on the ladder that way. Uh, I'm, I think he wasn't sure if there was someone coming up from above. There could have been someone hiding in main or something that was, mm -hmm. you know, coming down after him. Or he was hoping that someone would walk underneath him. But either way, I, I agree, it did seem a little bit strange. Um, those are the only, you know, things that I could really think of. And do we have a bit of a timeout or is it a technical issue? It seems like it's a pause coming through now. Can, maybe we should try and listen into what Fnatic are saying because then I don't think they're really panicked yet, but they got to make sure they don't start, lose any more rounds because then they'll actually be echoing. I kind of want to, uh, okay, let's go ahead and hear. Det var sista var där, så jag blev lost. Det var sista var där, så jag blev lost. Det var mindfatt, men jag blev inställd, men jag borde inte ens utmanat, så det var... Vi borde bara hålla mot sajten när det är 15 sekunder kvar. Den där rundan kommer jag fan upp. De som åker bort typ långa, då kommer jag gå upp direkt till... ...till rundan på ett månad. Det är just en silent. Vi blir sann. So, maybe a little bit of a timeout here, and... Fnatic, they do sound frustrated. I wouldn't say, like, out of, you know, out of control, but just, you know, minor frustrations growing here. What's their, what's their money like, if you just check some of the... Uh, the right now, it's, it's really spare for both teams, in fact. I mean, Na'Vi, yeah. they win the round, but they still have to buy up on one member, Zeus. I think he may have gotten dropped, actually, by, uh, by Edward, but still. What's big here is that Edward is actually top fragging right now for Na'Vi, 22, 2, and 13. So yeah. that's not a bad performance. That's what we Crims. want to see. Exactly. Crim's doing a lot of the work, but it's a bit more consistent across the board for Fnatic right now as far as the frags are concerned. Everybody in the high teens. And that's, uh, that's a good performance right now from the Swedes, who have to be talking it over right now. I'm sure they, they do this timeout, not necessarily even because they feel like the pressure, maybe just to try and break Na'Vi's momentum. Because you're allowed this one timeout per uh, half. Or per game, rather, per map. I mean, so, Fnatic, is... it's like, okay, they're starting to get a little fast here on us. We don't want to lose this advantage that we have. Bam, timeout, break it. Talk a little bit, you know, over what we need to be doing to adjust here and make sure that Navi can't get back into this game. I actually think because timeouts is something we haven't really dealt with a lot before, but I think if you are going to have a timeout, it's much better to have it now that you're still in control of the game. You still have a decent position. You just want to make sure you can figure out how to close it and then go on to the semis. Because if you have it, what, let's say this game went out of control for Fnatic and we ended up in 14-14. If you do a timeout then, getting your players back into the right frame of mind is going to be way more difficult for Devil Walk and Pronax combined. Even, even with a coach, that's still a hard task. So, yeah, I think sort of strategically speaking, it's not a bad idea for Fnatic to take this time right now rather than later. Slow down the pace. Yeah. Slow down the pace. And, I mean, we've seen it in, I mean, all sorts of different kinds of uh, sports as well. You know, just basically technical timeouts. I mean, you can use them just the same as regular timeouts when you actually have to discuss everything over again. But Na'Vi right now, uh, it's actually, yeah, Na'Vi, we restart the round, or we don't restart the round essentially, but we will have the money here for Na'Vi to buy up. Edward's sitting on, on nearly eight grand, so they won't have any trouble at all buying. Fnatic are the ones who are hard pressed at this point, and this is maybe why they take the time out now as well, because this round is huge for Fnatic. And fully bought up, they have a total of $650 between three players on the Swedish lineup. All right, so... Yeah, just a bit of a pause. Just, just wondering if they were saying anything here. Looked like Crims was saying, uh, thanks for... Uh, thanks for waiting. Thanks, thanks for being for patient, waiting. right? I mean, it's, uh, it would come as no surprise. I mean, they're, well, they're Swedes as well. They're very polite. Yeah. They're kind of like Canadians. While they keep this doing, let's see what, the, what, God, what Navi is saying, just for the fun of it. F1, ticket, he told, uh, when he press, after three seconds, he, uh, we can hear him. After three seconds. Serio, you have a lot of F1? Stark, vote, call vote, call vote. And what now? Все, игра, поехали, поехали! Дай F1. Дай F5. I need F5. All right, so the, the pause is cancelled here. They did have a bit of a sound issue, it sounded like, but um, they still sounded pretty excited to get back into a little oh, yeah. bit of a shout then. 
Get it on, guys. Here we go. If you're just joining us, then a big welcome here to the ESL stream. This is Navi versus Fnatic, the first of four quarterfinals today. You have to stay tuned. Cancel all your plans and watch Counter-Strike with us today. Yeah, this is where we need to be here. Three more best of threes coming at you today. All the quarterfinals being played out here on this stream. But now we're in the deciding map between Navi and Fnatic. The semifinals on the line and Navi on the, on the point of breaking Fnatic's money. Fnatic definitely wanting to take a pause to slow things down here because this round is so important. Navi, they know it as well. You know, that hoot, that, that, uh, that shot at the beginning, they know they're close. If they can take this round, it would be massive. And Flusha once again in that position, and Edward, it seems like he's wised up to it this time. They want to root Flusha out of here as quickly as possible. Yeah, great flash bang in here. They're going to overwhelm him. Just man advantage coming in. Flusha goes down. He did do a lot of damage. Look at Seized and Guardian, but it's a good start nonetheless. And I think, you know, you're right, they, they were excited, but I'm not sure if, if it's not going to be a bit of false, false confidence here. I think even if now we win this round and make it 12-12, that's still a long ways to go. Make All it till you make it, Andrews. Look at the money. Look at the, sorry, look at the health he has. Seized, Edward, Guardian, Solo. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, they've taken tremendous damage already, but Starx, that's not going to change anything. One shot from an AK to the head and Pronax is gone, helmet or not. And this is now a two-man advantage here for Na'Vi. And they have yet to really commit anywhere. There is a man actually sneaking his way into radio right now. Is that the case? From Fnatic, Olafmeister managed to find a man out in yard and JW with the Swag 7 will get a kill on Starx. Brings it back to a three on three, but Fnatic have the advantage. They have so much HP right now. Yeah, Crims will take down Edward. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Can they get this bomb down in time? So Navi at least get the bomb bonus here, and that's good news. But holding it two on three, that's going to require something uh, something quite different. Something An magical. extraordinary performance here. Olaf Meister charging down or checking the corner. That's a big mistake. Now it's a two on two. Navi, can they really win this? One on two here. Seuss is going to pick up a kill, and he goes down. Crims, really quick return and triple for Crims. He's been playing so well today. Yeah, and yesterday as well. Yeah. Crims, recent addition to Fnatic. They've had a good time to gel, it seems, to really start meshing because Olaf Meister top fragging for Fnatic yesterday throughout, or the day before as well, throughout the groups, but Crims as well, just doing huge work for the team, for the Swedes. Now it's Na'Vi who have to bounce back here. They did get the plant in that last round, but it looks like they were able to get an AWP for Guardian, and that's going to be great. He has that sniper rifle in hand. Zeus is the one taking the hit right now. He just buys an AK, drops it for a teammate, and just sticks to P250. 24th round. This first semifinals is really drawing to a close now. And Fnatic are just three short rounds away from a victory. And it's actually even worse than that, because if they win this, Na'Vi are going to have no money for the last two rounds. So it, it will really quickly get out of control here for Na'Vi. It might be now or never for them if they want to somehow bring it back here. Exactly right. This is the, this is now the tables have turned. Fnatic are now the ones putting the pressure on Na'Vi. And an instant headshot from Flusha picks off Seized at the yard. And Na'Vi are not going to be pleased with that. That's one of their AKs down with a lot of nades as well. So Seized was the point man there for Na'Vi. He needed to live to have those nades so that Na'Vi could have some options going into the rest of this round. But Edward taking some fire as well. And this is looking shaky here for Na'Vi. Starrix a little bit slow on the reaction. They did spot Olofmeister, but it looked like he was just too focused on throwing that smoke. And there's a spot again. Starrix doesn't connect with the kill, and Olofmeister's going to ball back safe to safety. Yeah, and Crims, cheeky spot, but Guardian knows it. He finds Crims instantly. He sees that door open. Crims has been using that spot throughout most of this half. But now Pronax holding it ramp, making sure that they can't wrap, get wrapped around through hell. Olafmeister is there to help with that as well. Navi is still looking for a way in. It's a four-on-four -four situation. They need to get another frag here to open the doors, but they're going to get down onto the lower side and get this plant. Fnatic not realizing what was happening. They thought this was going to be an upper play. Yeah, really impressive actually from Navi, but can they actually hold it? That's the big question here. Big overextension from Edward. They got one guy coming in from upper as well. Guardian picks up a kill. Can he get one more? They're so close. They're wrapping around it. Oh my god, he picks up the kill, making it one on two. That's unreal from Guardian. And now Flusher is going to be alone. Takes down one, but then he drops dropped by Seuss, and it's 11 to 13. And what is the money like now for Fnatic? That's the big question. They do not have enough to force it up. So Navi. They get a chance to close the gap a little bit more. I mean, Guardian has had not a good game on Nuke here, but those three kills, they made a big difference. That made, that, he just saved it. He just saved it right here for an RV. That was huge. That second frag at long was so big. And now, I mean, now, I mean, we have a real, we have a real game on our hands because Fnatic are the ones ecoing. Navi are going to be able to get just that much closer to securing this map, and they have not given up hope yet. 
Fnatic just trying to set up the crossfires at this point. They have three guys with CZs. Couple nades picked up on Flusha. He was the wealthier on the team, wealthier member of this team, it seems. Guardian looking to see if he can catch anybody peeking at eight, but for now at least, I no opening frag. Get a really uncomfortable feeling here that maybe Fnatic could take this round with the C sets again because that would be the most painful way for Navi to lose here. Flusher finds the angle. It's a cheeky spot and C's not really uh, quick enough on the reaction there. Starry starts going to kill. Flusher wants to pick up the AK and they're covering it here. Smart play from Edward. That's really good. Some tiny detail, of course, but uh, not at all bad that they don't let it get out of control. And Navi will make it to 12 13. Fnatic, what kind of money do they have? They really had low economy and they're actually going to go for a double eco. Um, do you agree with this? Yeah, I do. I do. They have the advantage still. They have the advantage still going into this. They're playing the CT side. If they can just sit back and try and remain confident going into this next round, they have to take it. And they want to give themselves the best fighting chance at this point because three rounds on CT side, I mean, we all know how easy that can be. Now Fnatic need to have the guns, need to have all the gear going into it to just shut Na'Vi down and shut them out of this game. Na'Vi are the ones, again, with all the money. But Crims, look at this aggressive position from him. He's all the way up in yard, right on the other side of that box. He's a man hopping, and that's seized. who's already taken damage. He drops down to 34 as well. Yeah, some good grenades coming in from Fnatic. Really impressive. Just uh, doing what they can with very little, and th those grenades aren't going to stop them from buying in the next round. So it's it's a it's a great investment, I think. Oh yes, I mean they're still going to have plenty of money. So Edward hunts down Crims, manages to get rid of him. There's still a man alive behind T Red, but seized quickly dispatches Flusha, and Zeus is going to find JW. This is now just turning into a game of picks, and Navi have the advantage. Pronax down to 10 HP, still dancing over here though with the 5-7, but Guardian will get the overkill. Yeah, and it's going to be another round for uh, for Navi right now. 13-13, the game is somehow tied. And I think you're right. I think Fnatic should still definitely have this. Oh, this but is they, tense. But, but at the very least, they got to be feeling the pressure now. They oh, yes. Th I mean, now they can start to feel it. Well, this is it right here. Right here, this tells the story, the money on Fnatic. If they lose this round, Navi are on 14 rounds, and Fnatic have to force buy. And they've already had their time, right? They already had their motivational speech where they said, come on, boys, let's do this. Let's get back into it. And that they lost that round anyway. So we'll have to see if this is going to work out here. Rush going on to the A bomb site. Great flashes now. Fnatic can't really see much of anything. And now we keep pressuring about Flusher and Olaf Meister and JW. They come in with the kills and it's working out great. Seized is going to be alone. And he goes down eventually. It's triple from JW. Fnatic trying, oh, sorry, Navi trying to throw in a bit of a curveball, hoping for that rush to work, and it doesn't. Yeah, but two solid players holding from the site like this. I mean, that was crucial for Fnatic, actually getting both of them alive on that site and holding behind the silos like that. It was so big for Fnatic. And even when they were flashed, I mean, those were really good flashes coming out from Navi. But again, you have to be so quick. You have to know exactly where you're going when you go for these A rushes. Just go straight out the door and, and be pre-firing these angles. And Navi not able to execute fast enough. And you're right. I think you, you, speed is the key. Speed because is they the had key. the flashbangs. If they had pushed when the, when the people were flashed, it would have been different. But so you're, you're excited. Maybe they're right. flashing themselves. That's the other thing. You know, Navi, maybe they're flashing themselves in their excitement. I mean, they, in their haste, they're trying to get out there so quickly. I mean, it's just a little bit of polish on that play, and Navi have that round, but Fnatic, they manage to hold, they dodge a bullet. Because like we said, I mean, if they lose that round, this, this could go Navi's way. Now Navi, again, with an opportunity to bring this back to 14-14. Uh, if Navi win this, it's practically mapped for them. It could very well be, but it goes the same way for Fnatic, because if they lose this Navi, they're going to be bankrupt once again. So this is, this is on a knife's edge right now. First kill is going to be hugely important, and we have a bit of a standoff over on this side of the map. So smart idea, I think, from Seize to just see if he can wait it out here. Pronax has been holding so well in this ramp room. I'm not sure if this is a good idea. They are going to go for him. He gets the kill, an instant return. But there's JW with another one. Starix waiting for some backup. Yeah, and Olafmeister quickly rotating over to ramp, plugging the gap, making sure that Navi can't speed up behind this. They've got the bomb here, Navi, and three members alive for them. Starix taking point, low HP but they decided to back off, and I think this is wise. Try and see if they can't count on Seize, who's managed to sneak his way through main, count on him to get a frag for them. Would have been a big opening here. JW goes down now. It's a three on three, but Starix goes down. An instant return. It's back and forth all the time. Bomb will be planted here, and actually now we don't have really great positions to deal with this. Edward is going to be walking in here. Flusher is in CT main. Maybe they can actually. They're both coming in from this side. It's a two on two, and they're going to double up on the aggression here. Edward has to get an instant kill. There's the one. Another one comes in. Flusher now one on one. He's Look at the wrong side, Seize takes him down, oh no! You have to look both ways crossing the road and Flusher doesn't. And he that... gets railroaded by the big yellow bus. Oh no, and now Na'Vi, they've done it 14-14.
This oh. is so close. The big but, yellow bus, and you know what? In those CIS countries, they all have dash cams, so they have it on video as well, I bet. 14-14. This is going to be playing it on replay tonight. <laughs> exactly. I, I don't know. This is not over yet. We might as well just see over time. Fnatic, I'm not out of it, but this is 14-14. I can't believe it. I won't believe it until I see it. Navi on Nuke. Navi on Nuke. I need and definite a map, proof. A map to, to, that could send them into the semis. Until Fnatic. I shake the hand of an ESL admin who tell me that they did in fact win, that he's confirmed it, I'm still going to be a little bit in doubt. Seized 70 HP from that grenade. Fnatic on an eco, all C set 75s, and now would be the time to step up that play. Yeah, and Seize is just going to smoke off secret. He does not want to deal with Crims. Olafmeister is currently the man holding there, but now Navi are really trying to set up the play for control of Yard. They smoke off secret, they smoke off main. They want to make absolutely sure that they clear this position out. Flush is still alive behind CT Red, though, so they have to be worried a little bit, but that's going to be down to Seized covering this angle. Instead, Navi decided to change things up. It looks like they're going to put the pressure out there, but Olafmeister finds Seized, and that's the Yard in Fnatic's hands now. Yeah, nice opening Pronax. If he gets a kill here, he is not going to get it, but it's very close. One more kill, and, and this could still go Fnatic's way. It's definitely not done yet here for the Swedes. Oh, they want to bounce fun. back. They can still win a JW in the corner. And nearly a double pick up. A Guardian picks up the headshot on his teammate, so it's still a three-on-three. -three. They're making their way down. They don't have a lot of time. If Olof Meister drops the bomb carrier here, that would be huge. And they're also getting sandwiched in. 20, 19, they got to go. Olof Meister with the kill on Seuss. Flusher with another one. Guardian, no chance. He's going to go down all of with a triple kill and it is not over yet 15 14 the C set 75s to the rescue. Oh man, and they do it. Olaf Meister playing a crucial role, killing C's to begin with, and then just taking over long, making sure that Navi can't get down there in one piece. Navi taking way too much damage, and Guardian, that, you know, th he's going to turn off the dash cam for that team kill because that it definitely costs Navi. That is, that is a mistake that cannot be allowed to happen ever, ever. So Navi, unfortunately, they lose a man. Fnatic take this round, and now it's completely turned around. Navi are the ones hurting. They go for the four spy. Fnatic are now one round away from getting into the semis. And Edwards starts off strong, picks off the upper. JW is down. And Navi, they're up a man now, moving out on yard. Flush is still alive, dancing towards CT spawn, but they've spotted him. They know where he is. And another kill. Edward delivers. Edward clicking away, and Flusher has to fall back. Yeah, three on three here. Crims does go down. He's a top fragger for Fnatic right now. They're going to lose one more. It's now a one on two, and this is either victory or overtime for Flusher, and he's a master clutcher, but this is really tough. He's going to have to go for a quad kill. They have plenty of time this time, Navi. They're very far apart. If they just manage to work together right now, it could be great. Edward, is he going to get the next kill? No, he won't. Flusher's too quick. Edward denied the triple. Now, Guardian has the bomb, and that's really important. He's going to go for the plan instantly, and Flusher... This could be one of the biggest plays of the tournament for him. He's checking to see if it's on upper right now because that smoke is down. Guardian with the perfect bait. But no, Flusha, it's on the other side and he's going to waste a lot of time. He does. Fnatic are in the semi-finals. Now we are gonna go out. On Nuke, they have done it. Fnatic go through after a hard-fought battle. All three maps going to Nuke, the worst case scenario. And Fnatic emerge victorious. Flusha clutches it and ends it on a 30 bomb. 30 frags for Flusha in regular time. But what a, what a fantastic play from the Swedes. The DreamHack winner champions yeah. will be moving on. Let's hear what we have from the analysis desk here. That was really a crazy game. Scoots, take it away. <laughs> crazy would be an understatement. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Crazy would be an understatement, to say the least. Um, I thought it was a CT-sided map. What is going on with Nuke today? Uh, uh, look, dude, uh, man, that game, i, I got to be honest, my, my gut feeling, it looks on the surface that we called everything right analytically because you know, it panned out the way we said over the three maps. We tipped Fnatic to win this one. My, did Fnatic make hard work of this. But not only that, though, just credit Na'Vi were having the guts to come back from where they were, where it was like you surrendered 10 rounds as CTs. You're done. You should be out of the game. And they, you know, they took a time out. They tried to re refocus. Edward today does not deserve to be on a losing team. 
absolutely not. The performance he put in across all the three maps, for me, uh, just head and shoulders, almost above anyone on the server, and he's lost. And Fnatic, I don't know where they found that extra bit of resilience. We said they had the versatility, but today it was just all about guts. Yeah. What a game. Yeah. Really, what a game. I mean, to lose 10 rounds as, as CT on Nuke, you know, in the final best of three, and then to bring it back to, you know, what could have been overtime, really. They, they lost the eco on, on what was the, the one of the last yeah. rounds there. And oh, look, what a game. You know, credit, credit to Na'Vi, absolutely, like you said. I mean, when you've lost that many rounds as, as, as CT, it's, it's very easy to give up. It's very easy to, to cave in, get negative, and, and just let it fall apart from there. But they dug deep. They brought it back, you know, they made, they made Fnatic work for it. You know, they had me on the edge of my seat. I, yeah. I couldn't believe what I was watching, really. What a fantastic <laughs> game. Uh, thanks for having me on, but, uh, on by the way, guys, because I probably wouldn't have watched this game if it wasn't, you know, <laughs> if it wasn't for being here, so I'm glad <laughs> I'm here. You do love Counter-Strike, don't you? <laughs> I love yeah. that, of course I do. No, no, but honestly, uh, you know, Fnatic fought deep, you know, they, they, they brought it back on an, on an eco, you know? I mean, they, that's, that's what we love the game, you know? That's why we love the game. Counter-Strike, what a game, what a fantastic game. And again, Navi does exactly what they need to do. Both sides, they win both pistols. They yeah. don't get early eco like that second round of each, you know, half. But uh, again, at the end of the day, that last eco. If, if you want to know what, where the major turning point in that game was, and maybe you'll agree, maybe you'll disagree, that timeout, that timeout yeah. that Navi had in the first half, they're 4-7 down as CT on you, despite having won the pistol and gone 3-0 up, and they're 4-7 down, and they're arguing. People have already been on Reddit and have already translated what was being said. I got some of it down here. Um, Guardian shouted, who's calling Long? Where is Long? This isn't us two. Right? Um, you know, and uh, I think Starrick said, let's push lobby when they're clearly there, you know, sarcastically. Yeah. And they were upset with each other. Yeah. And we've talked for ages about how Na'Vi don't have any strats on this map. You know, we talked at the start in the last 16, they played three maps. They're only prepared on three maps. And they looked out of sorts here. They were arguing, they were bickering. They took the time out. They said, you know what? They're coming through the lobby. We, we, we've got to really get on top of this. And funnily enough, it didn't really help in, within terms of the context of the round. They didn't go on to pick up uh, a, lo a lot of rounds. They picked up one more. But what it did was it calmed them down. They got to talk it out. They got to exercise all of the anger that was in the team. And you saw a very different side. You know, Na'Vi started to believe. They picked up that second pistol, and it was about momentum. And you're absolutely right. That does help. We got some stats, so we're going to bring those up as we always do and kind of walk through how that, how that all went. Well, there you go. I mean, that's what we, I was talking about here, brother. Edward, I mean, yeah. Edward sat just imperious at yeah. the top. And, you know, Flusher had a great late rally as well. But I mean, everything Edward was doing, it wasn't just about making the frags, it was about being so smart. Yep. He was the one guy, as terrorist, that was trying to cut off the map uh, and actually be in the right positions. And equally as well, when he was uh, playing as CT, he was the guy that was pushing out, getting the reconnaissance and making the calls for his team when everyone else was playing so passive. So huge performance from him and a flusher as well for Fnatic, often thought of as a support player, uh, primarily, not a mad fragger. He stepped up today along with Crims, who I think's had a great uh, tournament so far as well. Looking at those stats, you can see the difference there with uh, Fnatic's and uh, Nardis, I think. Uh, Navi, sorry, uh, Fnatic really, all the players sort of stepped up as they were more, you know, relying on one another than they could. Yeah. Whereas, in the, you know, looking at those stats, you kind of feel sorry for Edward after such a fantastic oh, three games. performance from him. You know, I mean, seriously, the whole tournament too. That, that's going to be one of the performances of the tournament. It's, it's, it's like an MVP performance, Absolutely. but he's lost. Yep. You know, it's, it's and incredible. It it's and, and it shows the standard yep. of the, the players we've got here. But what's interesting as well, if you look at the heat map here, and you can see tactically what was going on on the map, there wasn't like one particular weakness uh, when Na'Vi had that uh, poor CT side. Fnatic were able to get wherever they wanted, whenever they wanted. And I thought it was very interesting because I thought they didn't actually have anyone playing aggressive as CT. No. They were playing really passive. Outside, they didn't dominate it. You know, Guardian didn't do what you thought he might and go aggressive and make the early calls. He played really passive and that allowed Fnatic to move around the yeah. map get where they wanted, and they could pick and choose the bomb site, and they had so many problems yeah. in Radio Room. And too. it almost was the same thing when, when Fnatic was CT. It yeah. seemed to happen both way around. It was a quite interesting game of nuke, to be honest. I mean, it was almost T-sided. You know, yeah. we were talking about what, you know, how CT-sided is. It, you know, it seemed to have backfired today. They seemed to have forgot about it, and, you know, it's what led to such a fantastic game. Such, you know, it allows for the individual performances, you know, the, the four down, the final four down plus the two, or well, 3v1 clutch, I think it was, from Flusha, yeah. uh, right at the end there. So Yeah, yeah. it was. It was a four-man, but, uh, yeah. yeah. A three run and there was a, there was a couple of clutches as well. I mean, some people had little moments at, uh, at key points where they just you know stepped up yeah. and managed to make those clutches, which is what a performance uh, you know uh, at this level is all about. Yeah, and again, like 
both teams showed that they they can get through the momentum losses. You know, they 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 re, they both screwed their heads back on when they needed to. Fnatic just did it better at the end, right? And that eco again, like this game and the ecos are game changers. So that's going to wrap it up for this match for us. Again, thank you very, very Pleasure's much, Tom. Top Gun. Thank Pleasure you for having, having you. Yeah, it was great. You took yeah, my breath absolutely. away, man. Yeah, good luck down under. You know, I'd uh, love much. to see that scene keep growing and yeah, see you guys keep Fox traveling. Seminar on Facebook. Be sure to like the page, you know, help us come out as much as we can. There yeah. you have it. Love it, Eddie. And that being said, uh, we will be back. Obviously, now it's going to be Fnatic moving forward. They will yeah. take on the winner of their next match, Epsilon versus Dinitas, tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, and with that being said, back to you, Red Eye, at the, at the uh, stage. Thanks very much, Scoots. Yes, I'm with Devil Walt from Fnatic, who uh, I think his heart's still thumping, actually. Uh, just, it's a cliche question about how do you feel, but you guys came off the back of that. It was very tense, very close all the way through. You had to do a massive comeback in both games. And then it comes down to 1v1, <laughs> the last round on Nuke. What's going through your mind as a coach? I just felt like I died and re-lived, re uh, like got my life back in the rounds, like, oh. Man, it's so stressful standing behind the players. You know, you feel like 20 times as nervous as when you're playing, because you're so focused on one thing, but you're looking at the audience, you're looking at the scoreline, you're looking at what every player is doing, they do mistakes and everything is like, oh man, it's, oh, I'm uh, happy it's over. I'm happy it went our way. It, it's definitely worse not playing and standing behind the players. And, and for some reason, you kind of look at it and you're like, yeah, you might see something you don't like and you might in your head you're thinking oh, what are you doing but but actually you have to be it's okay boys we're all right how, how do you do that i, I don't know that uh, i mean i think everyone can make mistakes it's not their fault could be because of our missing communication maybe they were focused on another thing and missed the missed the call from another guy so it's it's we're all humans mistakes happen and uh, you got to accept that you can't play a perfect game so what about, what about map one? Let's just look at the game itself for a little bit. Poor start. And what changed for you? Did you suddenly, did JW figure them out? What happened that made it such a turnaround? I think we were a bit sloppy in the communication. I think every round we played ST, it was pretty close. They won uh, two and three retakes, two and fours, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, just, we just kept on going. We talked through it and uh, just added uh, some more communication where we were sloppy before. And, uh, you know, every round we did ST on Inferno pretty much worked. We got the after plan situation we wanted, and uh, we could ju just couldn't uh, team play and finish out the round. So uh, I, think, I think we played a very well uh, played uh, T half, and uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy we went our way. When we, once we got to the CT, I think they were, I think they had like 9 1, and we turned it around to 16. Uh, I can't remember the score, but it was, yeah, we had a lot of monstrous, like a lot of rounds string together. Yeah, and then the second map, much better, and, and then they just, you know, pull out brilliance on the CT side and what we generally consider to be mostly a T, T map, and there's not, nothing really you can do once you go that far behind on CT. So you move to map three, and the worst thing possible can happen is that because of the map veto system, they've got CT on nuke to start. You, what do you think when you go to, are you just thinking, okay, round by round, one at a time, I know, but are you thinking three rounds is all right, four rounds is all right? What are you thinking at that point? Uh, before the game, we thought, well, if we win the pistol, we're all right. We can, we can shut them down on the CT side. But this game was, uh, was not, not CT sided, I would say. So I was a really, really weird game. And uh, yeah, I don't really know how to explain it all, but uh, I felt like so secure standing behind them. We got that 10-5 lead on the T half. Uh, but I mean, I think did they win the pistol as T? Yeah, and they kind of rolled. But I mean, 10-10, and when you see this, it's all right, you know, uh, that's all right. And uh, but then like just trading rounds after and after, man. When when, uh, when Guardian got that flick shot, bottom sight as well. Just things seem to be going away from you. Are you, are you standing there thinking, oh no, oh, what is going on right now? I just, I kept believing at least, but it felt like it, were, it was slipping away. But I'm, uh, I'm really happy that the boys pulled through and flushed it with that insane clutch at the end. Uh, I mean, couldn't be a better finish of our best of three series, uh, emotional wise, you know? Uh, I was so happy. Okay, one step away from playing for this in the final again.
eyes on the prize and all that. So, any preference on the next game? Um, no, as long as we win. Good enough for me. Ladies and gentlemen, Devil Walk from Fnatic, thank you very much for joining us. Fnatic are uh, just squeaking through to the semi-finals, and if that's a taste of things to come today, you better believe we've got some more great Counter-Strike on the way. We'll be back very shortly after this quick break.